Konnichiwa minasan. Kirk here from jamaipanese.com. Welcome to the long overdue episode 6 of the JA podcast, being recorded on the 8th of January 2017. In the last episode, I did an interview with Rochelle Brooks Mighty, a Jamaican living in and working in Toyoma, Japan, as a jet participant. The interview was super popular, and I decided to build on what the listeners apparently liked. So today, I have with me another special and interesting guest, Ayana Wise. Ayana is an American living and working in Japan. In this episode, I'll be chatting with Ayana about her experiences in Japan, and I hope this insight will be useful to you, my lovely listeners. Episode 6 of the JA Podcast begins now. Episode 6 of the JA Podcast begins now. Welcome, Ayana. Thank you for joining me today on the JA Podcast. How are you? I am good. Thank you for having me. Ayana is a young professional who resides in Japan. And today on the on the episode 6 of the JA Podcast, we'll be finding out all about her. So, Ayana, how, have you, how long have you resided in Japan? And have you lived in the same area all that time? Uh, well, I've been in Japan for, it'll be six years in March, and I've only lived in Osaka. Uh, but I've moved about two times. And the first time I moved was like 10 minutes away from my last apartment, which was in North Osaka. And then, but more like central in the city, uh, just recently in November. Yeah, November. Nice, nice. And what was that moving experience like the last time? <sighs> well, I think the first time I moved, I had a lot of help. I had one of my coworkers help me. And again, it was only 10 minutes away. So I I didn't have a lot of stuff as well. It was like two, two and a half years of being in Japan. I moved because I quit my first job that had my apartment. Like there, it was their apartment basically. So if I quit the job, I had to leave that apartment. So then I found a new apartment with like a regular, um, how do you say, real estate agent with my Japanese coworker. And then um, I moved the little stuff that I had 10 minutes away from my old apartment. And I didn't have a lot because the apartment, the first apartment I had was furnished. So I didn't have to buy, was furnished. So I didn't have to buy any of that stuff, like a fridge, desk, and all that stuff. And it was really small. So um, it was very easy. And then I had another friend, another Japanese friend, who had a van. And I just put all my stuff in there, drove 10 minutes away. Well, not even 10 minutes by car. It was 10 minutes by walk wow. uh, on foot. Yeah. So it was 10 minutes on foot. And then um, so driving there was like a lot less in time. But it was... That that apartment was like on the third floor, no elevator. It was kind of like a house, but it was still an apartment. So that was like the only um, kind of tricky part. But other than that, um, that move was easy. But this move recently, I did mainly by myself into a bigger place, but farther away, kind of like by train, it was an hour and some change. Wow. Ayana to be yeah. adults doing it by herself. Right. It's like I'm this type of person that likes to be independent and I want to try things on my own at first. And I I don't like asking for help uh, it generally, but I know when I need to ask for help. So I do. But for the most part, I just want to do a lot of it on my own. But it was just so stressful. And I did get some help from my uh, current coworkers. But in the end, I did a lot of it on my own, and I was just like, oh, my God, never again. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. That's, it's, I, I've heard horror stories of um, foreigners in Japan and having to move um, mostly prefectures from prefecture to prefecture. But I know it's expensive for the moving vans and other little stuff that you have to consider, like getting rid of large appliances and all that, all that jazz. 
So good job. Oh, uh, yeah. Knowing a lot of foreigners is that you can get a lot of stuff for, like, free, like, or discounted. Like, there's a Facebook group called Osaka Sayonara Sales. There's also other locations that have Sayonara Sales on Facebook. So, like, if you join those groups, you can find something cheap. Like, let's say um, my apartment didn't have a stove and I needed one, right? And luckily, when I was looking, I was like trying to look for cheap ones. But luckily, my friend knew somebody who was selling it for real cheap, like 3,000 yen, which is like $30, US $30. And usually those stoves cost like uh, over 100 something dollars or $200. So I was like, mm, I got a $30 stove. <laughs> so um, was it hard to settle in Japan, though? You know, like to meet new people, get comfortable in your job, community, um, etc.? Uh, I think the first year was a little difficult. First year was a little difficult for me. I really didn't have many friends. And I was trying to be like this new person. Like, yeah, I'm not this old person anymore. I'm not from this like United States. Like, I'm, I hate <laughs> America. Like, I mean, I still don't really like my home country, like political wise. But um, for the most part, I was trying to be like this person that I wasn't. And uh, I think after I like, put my guard down and try to meet more different types of people. Cause I, I at first was hanging out with my co-trainees, uh, this Australian guy, this New Zealand girl, and then I guess other people in my company, but it's like, they weren't really my kind of people I wanted to hang out with, but I still did it anyway. Cause I didn't know anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the New Zealand girl, I, I still like kind of not really talk to, but, keep in contact via like Instagram and I'm supposed to visit her someday. <laughs> <laughs> do it. I do want to visit New Zealand like for real. But uh, yeah, like the first couple of years was a bit hard. And um, I think on the second year, I decided to just stop being, I don't know, weird. And, <laughs> <laughs> and always home because I'm very social to be, like naturally so I went to this bar that the Australian co-trainee took me to once and he's like yeah they have reggae night on Fridays um and there's this one cute bartender uh this Japanese guy with dreads I was like oh okay I'm just gonna go to this bar on Fridays um until I make some new friends <laughs> and I did <laughs> oh I eventually God. did <laughs> I hung out with all these Japanese people who like reggae and they invited me to groups, not groups, events, like um, outdoor events or like even some parties on the weekends. And that's just how I met a lot of my uh, Japanese friends. <laughs> okay, so is this like um, Japanese reggae or uh, reggae from Jamaica or a mixture? It was a mixture, but mainly these Japanese people that I was hanging out with, they liked uh they like Jamaican reggae they didn't really play they didn't play because it was like those friends were DJs so they played original reggae and dancehall um but mostly reggae not so much dancehall and the thing about me is that I grew up with soca because my family's from Grenada and um and reggae but as a teenager I was so like cool with dancehall and dancing the dance on like Sean Paul and all that type of stuff. Ooh. <laughs> so, like Sean Paul and all that type of stuff. Ooh. <laughs> so like coming here, it's like, oh, Japanese people who like things that are from my culture. That's awesome. But it's just like the events eventually I got tired of because they just played slow reggae. And I'm just like, I need to dance. I don't need to chill. <laughs> You want to gyrate your body. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> but yeah, they, they were good friends to have, but um, they weren't really close. Like, I couldn't really have deep conversations with them. It was just mainly hanging out with them. So it only lasted like a good two and a half years, probably. So I don't really hang out with them that much anymore, but we still are connected via like Facebook and Instagram. All right, so what's the best part you would say about living in Japan? Um, I, I like traveling around 
easily. Japanese um, <laughs> is a very annoying, basically. It's, it's also very expensive. Um, so getting around BI, the train, subway, and even the Shinkansen, the bullet train, yes, is I'm a, I'm a very... Big Shinkansen fan. <laughs> right, it's very, very convenient. Like, um, for example, um, J- January 1st, I went to Issei Shrine, and that's in Mie Prefecture. I live in Osaka Prefecture, and it's like a good two and a half hour train ride. I had decided like the night before, like, hey, I'm going to go to Issei. Like, you can't do that if you're like going to take the airplane <laughs> or like <laughs> something else. Like, where you have to actually plan uh properly for it like you can just hop on a train and just like i'm gonna go take a day trip somewhere far um so yeah that was one thing and then like i did take a five-day trip to uh well from osi trip to uh well from osaka to fukuoka in 2012 fukuoka is up north um that's not north that would be more south or south west you know how like japan is like not really yeah not really (laughs) straight it's like (laughs) (laughs) yeah what continue but yeah so like it was really fun um but it was an experience because i tried to like travel solo i wanted to like experience traveling alone and in 2012 i my japanese level wasn't at the level it is now like especially with understanding and so i was like really really nervous about traveling alone but it's like, you know what? They're trains. The trains are, they're, they're easy to take. And I understand a little bit of Japanese, so I'm just going to go. And I had, I didn't like plan thoroughly. I was like, I loosely planned like, okay, I'm going to go here and here and here. So I first went to Himeji, uh, to see Hiroshima, here and here. So I first went to Himeji uh, to see the castle. But at that time it was under construction. So I didn't really get to see the castle fully. Um, but I did get to see the quarters, like the women's quarters and the grounds. And then after like spending maybe three hours there, I went to Hiroshima and all this was on like local trains or express trains. I'm not really sure. Um, my memory kind of fails me there, but it, I know it took a longer time than it would if it was a Shinkansen. <laughs> yeah. So I went to Hiroshima and while I was on the train, I had internet to book a hostel while I was on the train. Yeah. <laughs> I am <not> the planner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm just, you know, planning as I go. <laughs> <laughs> so I booked that and then I reached there around, I went around Hiroshima Castle. I went to the, the what is it, Genpaku? The dome, I, I right now can't like remember the name of it, but basically the structure that is survived the nuclear bomb, uh, yeah, that and the museum as well. And oh my god, the museum was so heavy, and I cried at the end. Uh, but it was definitely something that I'm glad that I experienced to see like how resilient this country is. And um, yeah, I enjoyed Hiroshima. And I did make a, a temporary friend because like hostels, you meet like all kinds of people. And that was my first time ever, ever being in a hostel. So I, I uh, went to the museum with one of the people that I met at the hostel. Like it was kind of like, hey, you're, at, you know, we met at the hostel. What are you doing now? Oh, let's go to the museum. And we just <laughs> met at the hostel. What are you doing now? Oh, let's go to the museum. And we just yeah. went together. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. As it relates to the the heavy museum, I actually recently came back from my trip to New York, and I went mm-hmm. to um, the Native American Museum in New York, and that was that was quite heavy. I didn't quite cry, but I was like, I had to like get out of there when I, you know, realized that these people had, you know, such detailed culture and and um, you know family values, etc. And you know, we all yeah. know what happened. Um, with, with, with that in the states and it's probably still happening today right um, right and i also enjoyed my little whirlwind tour of japan um, and that's how i met you in 2011 when i just kind of hopped on a train just like you <laughs> early each morning and just like went into a different direction 
I didn't do, yeah. I didn't do many sleepovers, but um it was interesting to just like get up to just like get up at six AM and just go somewhere. But you have that pass. Like I can't get that because I live in Japan. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, you have this pass, you can take any JR, any Shinkansen. You can go from Fukuoka to Hokkaido if you wanted to. I'm yep. like, oh my God, I want that pass. But no, you can only get it from outside Japan as a tourist. Yep, yep. And they check your passport <laughs> and all that jazz. But yeah, it, it 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 was fun, and I hope that in twenty seventeen you you know have more adventures in Japan and maybe go visit your friend in New Zealand. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know about the New Zealand trip. I do have other trips in the works, like in planning um, right now. But I think New Zealand, if I seriously tried to like save up for it, it would be next year. Yeah. So we've heard about the good thing. So we've heard about the good things about living in Japan and your travels a little bit. Um, what's what's the most difficult part of living in Japan? Uh, well, I mean, I mentioned earlier about my move. But basically, anything that's very important that could be like, you know, getting a phone contract, banking, medical, uh, again, moving, or just rules, like maybe like, some certain laws that you might not know of, like bicycle laws. I don't know. It's just like getting in, getting in trouble is, or ah, uh, one time I lost my wallet <laughs> trying to like talk to the police about finding my wallet. I couldn't do by myself. So like I said, I am generally like an independent independent person. Um, so when it comes to like oh, okay, something very important, see. Uh, if like a friend or a coworker who can help me has the time to help me um, at the same time that I can go to like these certain things, like maybe medical checkup or going to the bank and stuff like that. So if they, their schedule doesn't match with mine, it's like, okay, I have to wait longer to get something done. Where if I knew Japanese, like a hundred percent, I mean, <laughs> I don't think it'll ever be a hundred percent, but if I knew very well how to speak, and, and understand Japanese and I can just do it myself whenever I feel like it. So that's like the most difficult thing for me is just very frustrating. And I just wish that I could just like input the <laughs> language I have <laughs> like in the matrix. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that, 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 like, I can understand how that can be difficult, you know. Um, I, you know, I like I, my, one of my, um, I, you know, I like I my one of my fears if I would lived in Japan would probably be getting sick. <laughs> you know, and oh yes, that's another thing. Oh, I did get sick one time really bad um, mm-hmm. to, uh, a year and a half ago. It was so bad, and I I have never been to the hospital until then, and um, that was what 2015 in September. I had a fever for a good four days until I actually went to the hospital. And luckily, I have a friend who speaks very well in in, um, in English. And uh, she had been living in Arizona for a while. And she came back to Japan just to visit for like a couple of months or, yeah, for a couple of months. And it was just the timing that she was there. She could drive me there, like... She took care of me. She's like, Ayana, you're still sick. And she's like, Ayana, you're still sick. What's wrong with you? Go to the hospital. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but like day four, I'm like, my fever is still this high. And they're like, all right, Ayana, we have to go to the hospital. I'm like, okay, I guess. <laughs> and I was just so annoyed because it was during a national holiday weekend. Mm-hmm. So going to the hospital was more expensive. And I did on a holiday. Just because I it's do. a holiday? Yes, it's ridiculous. Oh my god, I thought hospitals anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. That's anyway. So, um at the time I didn't have a full-time job and I didn't have insurance. Um and I didn't get the national insurance that I'm supposed to get when you don't have insurance from your Employee. full-time job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um I had to go there with no insurance and 
sick as a dog. And pay hundreds of thousands of yen? Thousand yen, okay. which is like, it's like 300 something dollars because only the emergency room was open too because the hospital is pretty much closed because mm-hmm. it was a holiday. And I went, I think, at night as well. So it was just annoying because I saw the doctor. The doctor's like, well, if you take this medicine, you should be fine. I'm like, that's it? <laughs> $300, please. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 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 a baby when I'm sick. <laughs> I'm not apologetic about that. So I'm like, oh my god, I'm living alone in Japan, and I'm sick. I don't know how I'd manage, but hopefully, I when I eventually get there, I will hopefully not get too sick and have someone to help me out when needed. You know, it's like I'm very stubborn when it comes to being sick. I was like, I'm not sick. <clears throat> I'm not sick. <laughs> I'll be fine tomorrow. I just need to stay in bed. But then when I'm really, really sick, I'm like, I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. I should be fine tomorrow. And then I'm not fine the next day. So it's like, oh, <laughs> I'll be fine the next day. And I'm not fine. So it's like, all right, I guess um, I, I have should to go to the hospital. The sh- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, what? I came to Japan in 2011, and my first experience going to the hospital was 2015. So, <laughs> so did you get that insurance now? Just asking. Oh, I mean, I have it now. Awesome, With my awesome. job now, yeah, I'm I'm fine. Uh, I didn't explain my job now because I, yeah, I don't teach English. <laughs> you don't teach English anymore. Okay. No, not in a school, not in like the school setting anymore. I'm still working in English education industry in Japan, but with what I do now is I write or I type basically scripts for educational English video lessons for jukus or I guess you know those after school programs for kids uh that are in elementary school so elementary is what nine to thirteen I believe so so I guess primary school in a sense yeah for us yeah so yeah I write those scripts and then I also am in the videos that we record in Tokyo so awesome, Ayana the the model, superstar. Uh, model, actor, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I write them. I was like, okay, and it's very simple. It's nothing complex. It's not like one of those kid shows you see on TV. It's like this is a video lesson. <laughs> yeah. But um, I know you started out in English, um, teaching English, and I know you te- you taught at a um kindergarten, was it? Yeah, well, so if you want to go through my resume in Japan, Mm -hmm. I started with Eon, uh, which is fine to say, an Eikaiwa or English Conversation School. I did that for two years and like three months. Mm -hmm. Then to just do dispatch teaching with them. And that was basically part time for the most part. I did that for like seven months, but it was really, really hard because I wasn't getting the contracts that I thought I would get. So I didn't get the same amount of money as I was getting before. So I was like broke for a lot of the time, especially (laughs) towards the end where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. (laughs) And then I uh, signed up for this thing called Hello Work, whereas you sign up and they, it's like basically an employment agency. And they had given me an invitation for an interview for uh, kindergarten. And I had never taught like kids that young, but the owners, it was like a brand new school too. They really liked my, my uh, demo lesson and my interview, I guess. And so they hired me. So I did that for a year. Then I had to leave that job. I had to leave that job due to some drama (laughs) <laughs> which is like a whole other story. It's like another <laughs> long story. <laughs> um, but yeah, I left that job to do the dispatch teaching again. And then also um, part-time work in a different kindergarten. And I did that for a good 10 months. Until, until then, I, uh, yeah, I was doing a lot of part-time or off-the-record type jobs, like teaching jobs. So it was like dispatch teaching and the kindergarten was my official jobs. So when I had to do like taxes, like those jobs were on that. Uh, But then I did other extra jobs just so I can pay for like things that are essential. So I was just very, very busy. I was basically working full time, but doing part time stuff. Wow. Must have been challenging at that time, but you've moved up the ladder now. And now you're uh, 
what actress slash writer <laughs> well <laughs> before i get to that it's mm-hmm. like i did that for 10 months and then i was like okay i want to teach full-time again for kids okay i found this really cool company that like on paper it seemed really cool and actually the other schools that i visited were cool but the school that i was positioned in was not and the manager was a bit crazy and just not fitting for me at all so i only lasted there for four months but luckily i found the job that i have now and that was that started this year in july so Last yeah, year in I'm July. Good. <laughs> it's January. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not yep. this year. It's, it's January 2017. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, last year in July is when I started the job. So yeah, I haven't been there that long. But I mean, for the most part, it's longer than four months. So I'm I'm good. <laughs> and it's, that's better than, it's. Would you say it's the best of your job so far? I would say yes. Yes, it's, it's the best in the sense that I have a lot more freedom. I can do... You know my job and my time just because i'm writing scripts it's like okay your, your deadline's here so you just have to make sure you get everything done for that deadline and then i would go to tokyo which is a perk like the interview i had is like you know some people don't want this job because they have to go to tokyo i'm like for me this is a perk like i have friends in tokyo i want to go to tokyo just so i can see my friends i don't I don't really care for Tokyo because I'm a Kansai person at heart, Mm -hmm. but it's just like, I have friends in Tokyo and there's like events sometimes that I want to go to in Tokyo. So it's like, what? That's a perk. Like, let me take this job. (laughs) And and it's like another, I guess, good thing about it is um, that it does pay more than teaching. Um, It kind of sucks that teaching can be so low. Um, It kind of sucks that teaching can be so low in Japan. I think because it's become watered down over the years, though, and especially with Tokyo 2020 coming up, people thought yeah. the the salaries would rise, but it looks like they're like watering down it's, more. It's it's it, it was stagnant for the longest time, and like like you said, now it's just watered down. And I just kind of feel for my fellow friends who are still in the teaching industry because they're not they do a lot of work and they don't get a lot of pay. I mean, there's some companies that, that, you know, pay their employees um, pretty well, but I think for the most part, it's not that great. So that's why there's a stigma when it comes to like, oh, you just teach English, right? Yep. It's so annoying. Like, I respect the people who do it for a long time, but I feel like you shouldn't do it for too long because there is a cap. If you do it for more than, I think, there's a cap. If you do it for more than, I think, five years, it's like you you need to do something else. It's it's like if you do it for longer than five years, you no, know, that's your thing. I'm not gonna judge you, but for the most part, I'm thinking, why you could do so much more. <laughs> yep, yep. Some people that I've met, um, Jamaicans and otherwise, some of them really have a passion for teaching. Yeah. Um, you know, they they grew, they went to school and studied teaching and. Some of them were teachers back in their home countries before going to Japan. So I, I can understand somewhat with those people. But then there are others who really don't like teaching. Um, they're just in it because that's the only job that they can get. So they kind of like slug it out. But they don't try to do anything else. I, I don't know. Well, I definitely understand the real teachers. Uh, so I, I mean, again, I'm not judging any people that I know who are real teachers. Um, this is one girl. She was in the same company as me for a minute, but she quit before me because she's a real teacher. And she's like, this job sucks. Like these, this company and these people that I'm working with do not really care about these children and what they're teaching the kids is wrong. So, you know, she, she's been like job hopping a lot because she wants to teach the way she wants to teach. So it's a bit hard for her because she has this experience and, you know, a passion to teach kids, but is limiting, limited, sorry, for teachers like her to be teaching in Japan. So. Yep. Interesting. I mean, just the mm -hmm. English industry in Japan in general is limited or limiting because like for me still, 
I have to follow certain rules because the government has guidelines. Still, I have to follow certain rules because the government has guidelines. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to like make this script to sound more natural than usual, but my coworker's like, um, is it okay if we cut down, make the sentence shorter? It's like this grammar allows for a longer sentence or it just sounds like crap. And they're like, but they didn't learn this grammar yet. So it's like, you have to cut it down. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the challenges. It's, it will be interesting yeah. to see how things develop going coming up to Tokyo 2020. I'm mm -hmm. hoping things improve. Um, I'm hoping, you know, per people can get um, better paid and more jobs. But let's let's see how how that develops. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it can be very complicated because uh, on the side of the Japanese companies, like they probably encounter Japanese companies, like they probably encounter a lot of flaky people who come to Japan because like, oh, I just want to live in Japan and have fun. And then the job, um, even though they, they do the interviews, they still somehow get people that are flaky while there are real foreigners not real foreigners but the foreigners <laughs> who stay here for a long time who are reliable but still have to deal with the other flaky foreigners that give them like this a bad, bad rep yep yeah so it's like they can't get anything very good and substantial because of the foreigners that just leave the country for whenever and are flaky so, do you have any advice, now that we've spoken about work and stuff, do you have any advice for other young professionals aiming to move to Japan in the near future? If you're coming out of college and you've never worked before, I think you need to do a lot of research. I don't like seeing foreigners come here and be like, oh, you know, um, this is my first job and they just come here to fool around. I think that's that's pretty crappy for them and the company as well it's like come on and just just if you're gonna work work um but other than that like if you are already like work-minded that's fine but still do research about japan itself because um you might still have this thought in your mind that japan is just some magical place <laughs> <laughs> of like rainbows and sunshines all the time <laughs> and, like manga and anime and like cosplay and, like <laughs> Japan is so normal outside of that. It's just that's, not like a, like... that's like a tiny, minuscule part of Japan, you know? It is such a subculture that when you come to Japan, you're like, oh, where is all of this? Like, <laughs> dude, it's like in, oh, where is all of this? Like, <laughs> dude, it's like in, like, I'm saying Amemura, not Amemura, it's Osaka. It's Akihabara or, mm -hmm. or some other place in Tokyo. Or if you go to Osaka, it's in Nipponbashi. Like, it's such a small subculture. Uh, it's probably bigger on the internet. <laughs> but when you're in real life Japan, it's not like that um, at all. I mean, there there's, like, conventions and cosplay stuff, uh, events and all this stuff around. It's just you're going to have to look that up. And yeah, just do a lot of research and ask around, ask people or join groups on Facebook. That's another thing. Um, like there's this group called Black Women in Japan that I joined, but I joined after I came to Japan. So some people who've never moved to Japan join. And there's also Blacks in Japan, or even if they're not Black, you could join other like foreigners in Japan groups or Tokyo professional not Black, you could join other like foreigners in Japan groups or Tokyo professionals and stuff like that, where you can just ask people about life in Japan uh, as a foreigner before you come here. So you can get an idea. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who have like negative views <laughs> and there's going to be the super, super positive people. Mm -hmm. I think just, you know, take it as a grain of salt, just like get as much information as you can from both sides and see like, Oh, okay, maybe this is good for me. Maybe I want to move in this area or in this area. Just do a lot of research. <laughs> nice. Yeah, the, the, the bit about anime bunnies and, and sunshine was hilarious. Because <laughs> there are people like that. And I would admit <laughs> they, that there was a point early in my, like, like my interest in Japan, you know, came from reading, you know, um, about mm -hmm. World War II and all that sad stuff. But when I realized that, 
you know, this country that was like bomb to smithers was so creative yeah. and, and stuff. And I grew up with the Dragon Ball Z's and the Sailor Moons and all of that stuff. Same. Yeah, but you have to realize that, as you said, it's just a little subculture. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, people go to work every day. People have stuff to do and it's not some magical wonderland. I think one thing that helped me a lot was watching Japanese dramas um, with at the time with English subtitles, but seeing like real life Japanese people like do things Mm -hmm. (laughs) instead of watching anime and manga was like a lot better for me than I think some other people. Because like I know TV isn't going to be 100 percent accurate in America. So it's like, okay, this is how. Uh, some of it is portrayed in Japan. So, of course, I didn't think, oh, all of this is going to happen in Japan. But it's like, I got a good idea of how Japanese people are in Japan just from the dramas alone. Um, but because it's a drama, that means there's going to be drama. <laughs> <So> it's like... <laughs> yep, it's a drama. <laughs> all that stuff you might see might not happen, and it might happen, actually. I did have a lot of drama filled stuff happened to me in work related situations but i don't think it was the same as the stuff that i saw on the tv but other than that i've dealt with it and um yeah (laughs) so did you visit japan before moving to japan i wish but no i did not i just took the risk and jumped on a plane and like bye (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's like, Ayanna, you're so brave. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm just going to another country. I had no idea that was something to be brave about, to be honest. I was like, huh? Okay. <laughs> That's one of the things, think- though, that being American um, is advantageous because you, you know, from a lot of countries, you guys can just do that. While some other countries, it's a little bit more complicated to get permits and visas mm-hmm. and all that jazz. I mean, that's true, but I think for me growing up, I had um, gone to Grenada many times as a kid. There's actually one summer where my family left me behind for um, almost a month, and I stayed in Grenada with friends, family friends, um, and my grandmother for those three weeks that I was there. Um, And then I went home. I felt like I was by myself, but I was with a family friend. Although I don't think I remember that person anymore, and I don't think I was that close to them, but I was like, I'm just living the life by myself as a like 11 year old, just in another country. So I had that experience already, um, and although I was a bit nervous uh, going to Japan by myself, I was more excited. I guess fall back on like to be safe. I although it was a, a risk. I had a job lined up and they had a place for me to live. There are some people who I know that I've met in Japan who would come to Japan with nothing, no job, no nothing. And just like, oh, I'm just here. I'm just living in hostel, you know, jumping from this place to this place. And then they find a full time job. I'm like, huh? How did you do that? (laughs) That to me is a bigger risk, and that's brave. Uh, that's not to brave. What I did. <laughs> that's a lot more brave. <laughs> I agree that you were brave in in some sense. Um, my my 2011 trip to Japan was was kind of me testing the waters to see if I really wanna to do this sometime in the future. You know, because as you you said, you know, sometimes you you think it's so perfect that you know I'm gonna live and I'm gonna be happy and blah blah blah, but then you or neighbors or you know other kind of issues that become unbearable and there you know you've saved all your money or and you've you're happy around the world and now it's not what you expected it to be so yeah, yeah i think you were brave i'll agree to, to to do that but you did yeah ensure that you had the basics covered you know you weren't living on the street and you actually had a job <laughs> <laughs> yes and i stuck with that one job for two years and three months and i think after the first year i was like oh i was so over it because all of my good co-workers that became friends were leaving because we had gotten a new manager who was just like running all the Japanese staff away. I'm like, what are you doing? You're making the school like terrible. It was good for a good two years before I was there. Um, that's what they were telling me. But just, she was ruining the school and is ruining it for me. But 
they became good friends with me, uh, the co-workers that left me, uh, the co-workers that left, and I still keep in contact with them. So it's it worked out. All right. It's the start of a new year. Um, Yay! What are some <laughs> of the Japan-related goals you have for 2017, Ayana? <laughs> so when you mean Japan-related, do you mean like language or yeah. work? Like, <laughs> Do you plan to learn more Japanese? Do you plan to travel more around Japan? You know, stuff like that. Actually, actually, yes. I had decided to travel around Japan more. It's funny that as an, I guess, expat, I can call myself, for six years, I haven't really traveled around Japan as much as I thought I would when I first came here. So the first year I traveled around Kansai and I saw a lot of Kansai and then I've, I've seen Fukuoka twice. I've seen, I've been, and then I've, I've seen Fukuoka twice. I've seen, I've been seen, I've been, I've been to like Nagoya. That's still kind of around me. I've been to Tokyo many times and I even been to, what is it? Uh, is it Gifu? I've been to Gifu. I know not Gifu. What is it? Nagano okay. for snowboarding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't been anywhere else outside of that. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, Hiroshima as well. But it's just like, I feel like I'm missing out on other beautiful uh, scenic areas of Japan. So I, I made a New Year's resolution is it a resolution yep, yep it is goal cool. yeah i guess so <laughs> to visit different areas for like weekend trips in japan um something that i could do for a day or two days and so i went to ise which i for two days and so i went to ise which i've never been to i said for january 1st and again, that was just a two and a half hour train ride. So I was like, why not go out more of Osaka? It's like, I'm working, working all the time, like, and not seeing places like what? That's boring. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that more and just travel more in general. So I, I'm hoping that I can go to Thailand this year and South Korea. Every, everybody that I've known, um, that I've met, like other foreigners have visited South Korea and they love it there so I was like I guess I can visit I didn't really have an interest but one of my friends just moved there recently so now I want to go and yeah other than travel I do want to start studying and practicing speaking Japanese again because I had not been speaking for over a year <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about making videos in Japanese, but um, definitely we'll try to meet up with more Japanese people to speak mm -hmm. um, and to like actually maybe get a, um, a tutor again. Because I, I do have or I have been thinking of starting a business um, that I could do in Japan as well. And I think ha being able to speak and understand Japanese, even in a a higher conversation level is more beneficial than not uh, having it with, especially if I'm starting a business. I would like to get into the level of business Japanese, but if I don't even get there, I just want to get into the level where I can uh, understand like 80% of what people are saying to me. <laughs> Understandable. Like um, my Japanese is of course terrible. <laughs> I did. Uh -huh. um, studying many moons ago that <laughs> I did uh -huh. um, studying many moons ago that's the original reason for my blog at jamaipanese.com but then when I visited Japan and I thought oh my god I know directions and color <laughs> and how much is it and my name and all that stuff and then when people started speaking it they were like speaking at the speed of light <laughs> I'm like oh my god I, I can't pick anything up this is crazy I must go back home <laughs> It is yeah so um but after a month of being called, um how do you say this now engrossed in japan i did realize that my poor japanese became not so poor still poor but um yeah so good luck with your yeah. your 2017 goals I, I i hope you'll travel more and share more um on your youtube Thank channel you. etc <laughs> Um, I think yeah, your Japanese I mean, yeah. is, is not so bad from when you used to make videos, but I guess you living there, you will be the better judge than me. 
but it's yeah. hard it's hard living in Japan as an English teacher or in any English related uh jobs that I do because then I only am able to use English. I don't speak Japanese. And as when it comes to working, I again it's kind of like uh when I don't like to what am I trying to say? <laughs> when I go to banks or medical appointments, like I want to understand everything because it's important. So when it comes to working, I want to understand everything. So I speak English because that's what my job is in, is in English. Um, I had worked in a bar once and I had to use Japanese. It was so hard, but it, it helped a lot with my speaking and understanding. And that didn't last for that long. It lasted for a good year and a half, but I had to quit after I moved. So it's just like, I need to get over this anxiety of not understanding everything and just learn it. <laughs> yep. Then gross yourself with Japanese friends <laughs> and see how that works out. Thanks. All right. Um, you recently invited me to a Facebook group called yes. Black Creatives Japan. Um, what yes. is the creative, sign, creative scene like in your area of Japan? In Osaka, like, do you mean like with foreigners or with Japanese? Um, both, both really. Okay. Um, I guess with Japanese people, there, there's like areas where you can kind of tell, like, oh, this is creative. Like, look at this creative area. Like, <laughs> I think there's this place called Orange Street. That's what it's called, right? Or Horie in in Osaka, where it's kind of like, kind of like Soho in New York. Have you been into Soho? Uh, I think so. I think so. Probably. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like artsy and stuff like that. So yep, a lot of you got, older you got, buildings and stuff. Mm -hmm. You got like that to model one time because I was walking in that area. Ooh. It was so weird and bizarre. But it was like this artist and he had like an artistic sense of style. Like he, like when I say artistic, like kind of like funky. It wasn't like, it wasn't like fashion you would really, really wear. I don't know. I guess that's what you see in like fashion shows anyway. It's like, do, who really wears that? <laughs> so I did that job and also like a performance video for that artist. And that was like, I think 2012, 13. Um, but when it comes to like foreigners, I'm not really sure about the scene so much. That is why I made the group Black Creatives Japan. I mean, that one's more solely for Black creatives or art the um creative scene for black people in Japan, but uh, for other foreigners, again, I'm not really sure. And I think maybe it's probably more popular in Tokyo. Yes, yes, Tokyo. Probably more popular in Tokyo. Yes, yes, Tokyo. But it's interesting that you've modeled though. That's that's interesting to be like walking down the street and somebody be like, hey, can you model these weird clothes for me? <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, yeah, I mean, he, sure. he, he didn't approach me like that. He was like, hi, you know, I, you know what? I can't even remember how he approached me, but it was, it was friendly. He just gave me his card. He's like, if you're interested, I have like this modeling gig. And because of how he approached me, I, I agreed to it. It wasn't creepy at all. So how was his, um, his, his English? His English was not that great but i could understand what he was trying to say okay. and at that time also my japanese wasn't that great so he was speaking more english to me but uh it's interesting because i got how many four prints like two like long skinny prints and the other one is like smaller uh because um the for some time yeah so they had like these um prints out for the clothes as well um, and it is actually not my my face is not shown. It's cut off. Okay, okay. <laughs> but okay. but my black skin and the clothes show. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So tell yeah. us tell us more about the group, um, the Facebook group, and um, why you created it. Um, is it to get um, blacks who are creative in Japan together? You know. Pretty much. Um, I started the group because I I felt like there should be a support group. I had joined this meetup group like meetup.com group called I forgot what it's called but it was something like creatives with Osaka and it's like dang I wish I had thought of this before like I want to make a group like this so after like a year or so I was like you know what I'm gonna still make a group but I'm gonna make it with black people <laughs> <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> 
But yeah, um, basically I wanted it to be more of like group and a networking group. And I had just initially made it for people living in Japan, but because like there's people who are more nomadic who come to Japan and then leave and then visit or leave, whatever. It's just like, okay, I'm going to open it up uh, more to anybody who's like interested in living, have visited, have lived, anything like that. Um, from like black people from the African diaspora. So it's like diaspora, I mean. Um, so it's kind of like hard when I get requests and it's just like, should I let this person in? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, it's kind of frustrating for me. Um, but for the most part, I allow people who are noticeably African looking. <laughs> <laughs> so if I meet someone who's mixed, um, in person, I would invite them in. So it's not like exclusively only for like black people, dark skin, like fully can't be mixed kind of people. No, nah, it's not like that. Or like black people, dark skin, like fully can't be mixed kind of people. No, nah, it's not like that. But when it comes to just the internet, it's really hard to tell. And I don't necessarily message people like, oh, where are you from? What's your background? I just look at their picture and judge Can from I have there. A which DNA is... sample? Yeah, like, I don't do that. I just feel awkward asking. So it's like, um, I'm just going to look at your profile and to see like what kind of things you post, where you're from. Like you could be super light and look white to me. But if I see something that looks like, okay, yeah, maybe you're mixed, then I would. But it's kind of, it still kind of feels awkward for me. I just don't like that. <laughs> that judgment but this is what I do behind the scenes and now it's out in the open because I'm saying it <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want it to be like I don't know it's just weird I can't explain it it's weird. I, I understand and I, I'm sure the listeners don't think you're some crazy yeah, I, I understand and I, I'm sure the listeners don't think you're some crazy racist person it, the, the group is called Black Creative Japan right you know? so that alone explains what the rules are right uh, but other than that the the group is for creative so it could be anything and is there for people to help uh to ask for help get advice maybe do collaborations which some people have done already and also showcase their skills if they have a business or any projects that they're doing and like get people to ask like how is it so that is why i made the group yeah, I've I've been reading some of the back posts and participating in the few short weeks I've been a member, and it's 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 an awesome initiative. I'll I'm I'll be looking to to collaborate and and do stuff with members of the group. Um, maybe interviews, maybe YouTube collaborations, those type of things. I've seen musicians, um, authors, you know, bloggers, YouTubers, etc. There, so it's a nice wide mix and yeah i think it's a good little melting pot for people to bounce ideas off of and as you said support black yeah um, like anything you can collaborate like let's say this author needs some graphics like or mm -hmm. she's making a children's book this is like a real story actually okay. so this person i know i was like she made the story and she needed an illustrator um and she hired one of my friends so it's like because of this group that happens and it's like, I, I want that to happen. Like, there's, there's like, this, I guess, movement, I guess, like, black, like, the hashtag movements, black excellence and support black businesses. So it's like, I see that now on the internet a lot, especially in the US, and I believe UK and some other African countries. So it's like, well, we should make like, where can we connect? So that's why like this I made this group so I can like get people to connect. Like there's other groups. There's like this group called Black Professionals Tokyo. But it's like not everybody lives in Tokyo. And what do you consider a professional? So it's like maybe if we make it a little bit more open with creatives and it could be anything, any kind of creative, then these creatives can work together and make their business or whatever project, then it's easier to find in that group. Awesome. It's interesting though, and I'll be a participating member going forward and looking to team up. Please, with please. I need I need the group to be a little bit more active for 500 plus members. Like, start how kicking is people it? out. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can't do that. But I just want more people to like be a little bit more active. For 500 members, it's like the same like 20 people that. There. For 500 members, it's like the same like 20 people that <laughs> talk. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's usually but like I mean that. that's only natural. Yep. So I see that you're a cat parent like me. Yay. Um, Percy is your roommate. Tell us about his personality <laughs> and how he became your roommate. <laughs> My cat is now I think two and a half years old. I got him in the summer of 2015. Uh, he was. I guess if I do the math, right, he was four four months old then. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I got him, he was four months old. And I got him in a bar. He was in a bar. He was a bar cat. He loved people. <laughs> he was just on the bar, just, like, chilling. Well, people are, like, listening to reggae and, like, drinking and loud and stuff. And he's just there chilling. <laughs> um, I looked him up, and I had my dreadlocks then, and he was, like, chewing on my dreadlocks. I'm like, <laughs> So I asked the owner because the owner um, was a friend of a friend. Um, well, I guess an acquaintance for me then. And I was like, oh, are you giving these kittens away? Because he has his main cat. And he's like, oh, if you want the cat, you can. Just please think about it. Like, because it's, you know, it's a cat. You know, it's a living thing. I'm like, okay, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I think after like maybe two or four days, I said, okay, I really want this cat. And he's like, all right, you can pick him up at this time. So it was like a week later. I picked him up. And I've had a cat before in the States for a good maybe four years. But that cat was already um, big when I got it. So it had its shots. It, it was neutered. It, and unfortunately, it had uh, his claws taken out. Uh, yeah, that was not that was not me. That was not something I did. So when I got Percy, um, Percy was a baby. So I had to like really search online how to take care of a baby cat. Like <laughs> I don't know anything about this. I thought it was like, okay, just leave it alone. And it's just like, oh, it has to be potty trained. Yep. It has to like actually have these scratching posts because I didn't have a cat with claws. So I didn't know about scratching walls and stuff. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's how he became my roommate, and he's a lovely, lovely cat. Um, he's not really a, a people, he's not really fond of people so much as he was when he was little, but he doesn't swipe at people, or he doesn't scratch anybody intentionally, um, and he can be carried and just like, okay, you're carrying me. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, why are you doing this to me? But he does me, but he doesn't like swipe. He doesn't really do anything about it. He's just like, okay, I'm being carried. Or like, if he doesn't want to be carried too much from me, he would just try to get out. So I've gotten scratched a little bit before. If I don't cut his claws um, in a timely manner, I would get like kind of scratched because he's trying to run away. But other than that, like he doesn't intentionally try to scratch. So he's really nice. He's a nice cat. Oh, so he... Yeah, sounds like an interesting little guy. My my cat is... I got my cat about three months old or four months old as well. This is my second cat. Um, okay. Yeah, my cat is... What do you call it now? An interesting personality. She's very moody, as most cats are, I guess. <laughs> uh, well, Percy's not moody. I don't know about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my cat... One minute she's like, oh my god, I want your attention, I want your attention, play with you. It's back up, <laughs> you know? But um, cats are awesome. I originally wanted a dog, but I don't have the, the space for a dog. But a cat fit me perfectly. Um, you have an Instagram page for Percy? Yes, I do. It's Positions of Percy. <laughs> <laughs> I originally made that because he would make the funniest sleeping positions ever. Like the like for me the most interesting he did was when he was on his back and his four what do you call it the front paws like <laughs> they would just be all out and he looked like he was like praying for Jesus <laughs> like look <"Lord>, at Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> I have to take a picture. 
<laughs> but he doesn't sleep like that anymore. He still does do funny um, positions, but yeah, I have a Instagram for my cat. Okay. But he doesn't sleep like that anymore. He still does do funny um, positions, but yeah, I have a Instagram for my cat. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, I think we've had a good time talking to you. Um, Ayana, tell us where we can find you on social media and all that jazz. Okay, I wasn't prepared for this, but I mean, it's <laughs> you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and even Snapchat with the same name. It's Yana underscore Y Z, spelled Y A N A underscore Y Z. So it's a play on my name, my full name, but with my nickname which is yana wise but yz i'm gonna i'm gonna link those as well in the show notes so persons can just click and know where to find you so thanks again ayana for being on the ja podcast thanks for having me all right take care you too thank you for listening to episode six of the ja podcast thank you ayana for being such an awesome guest All the links related to this episode, including the questions I asked, Ayana, links to her social media profiles, and so much more will be in the show notes at jamaipanese.com as usual. Um, Feel free to leave your comments there as well, or tweet me at jamaipanese on Twitter, or leaving a comment on my Facebook page, or sending me a message via contact at jamaipanese.com. That's contact at J-A-M-A-I. P-A-N-E-S-E dot com. 